This video is part of the series in a first course in modelling, analysis and control. And here we look at an introduction to feedback loop analysis with a focus on proportional feedback. We're going to expect then that you're confident in deriving basic closed loop transfer functions. And you can see we've given the three transfer functions here to find the signals, the offset, the input and the output. First order systems. For convenience, we express the first order system in time constant form. That's what I've done here. So I've written it as capital A, that will be the steady state gain, over Ts plus 1, where T is the time constant. And we're going to assume the compensator is just a proportional K. Closed loop offset. A very important measure of closed loop performance is how close the asymptotic output is to the target R. And this is called offset. So we can use the final value theorem to get this. So the offset is the limit as t goes to infinity of r minus y, or the limit as t goes to infinity of e, which using the final value theorem is the limit as s goes to zero of s e of s. Now we can calculate, uh, plug in our formula for closed loop transfer function for e, and we end up with this formula here for the offset. Plugging in r equals 1 over s, so it's normal to treat r as a unit step when you're doing offset just for convenience. Then you end up with this formula down here for the offset, 1 over 1 plus g of 0, m of 0. Now, in an ideal control law, you will want this offset to be 0. Let's look at an example with the first order system then. So what's the closed loop time constant and gain and offset. So if we work out our formula, GC is GM over 1 plus GM, and then we plug in the values, then you get basically the closed loop transfer function is given by this expression at the bottom. Now I've put this in time constant form for convenience because what that means is you can see the closed loop gain is this term and the closed loop time constant is this term. So the closed loop gain is Ka over 1 plus Ka, and the closed loop offset is 1 over 1 plus Ka. And the closed loop time constant is T over 1 plus Ka. So those are terms which you should be comfortable deriving and which we'll use in the next few slides. We can plot those terms as a function of K. You'll see I've got K here at the bottom and basically see how do they vary as I change K. What do you notice then? The gain, that's this red curve, increases as k increases. So the closed loop gain increases, but it never reaches 1. And obviously the ideal closed loop gain is going to be 1. And therefore, if you look at the reciprocal curve, which is the offset, what do you notice? The offset never gets to 0, no matter how large you choose k to be. With the closed loop time constant, you can see it's getting faster and faster as you increase k. So you can get an arbitrarily fast loop in principle if you make k arbitrarily large. Now from design, in principle, you can select k to meet any criteria you want. So if I want the closed loop time constant, for example, to be 0.6, then I can go across here and I can say it's 0.6 if k has the corresponding value there. Or if I want the offset to be 40%, then there's 40% offset and I can map down and find what the corresponding K will be. These um, graphs show you basically what we've just demonstrated on the previous slide. So I'm increasing K. You can see this curve corresponds to K equals 5, this to K equals 2, this to K equals 1. And what do you notice? Basically, as K increases, I get faster, my offset reduces, my gain increases. Now you'll notice this is a 0.7 here, so the offset, which takes you all the way to 1, is still very, very large for all of these cases. But the key thing is you see increasing k, I get faster, and my offset reduces. But the offset is large in all cases. Let's look at a design problem then. We want you to choose a proportional gain k to set the closed loop pole to be minus 5 and you can see the open loop system 4 over s plus 2. So first 
I find the closed loop transfer function and extract the pole polynomial. So there's the closed loop transfer function. It's going to be 4k over s plus 2 plus 4k. And the closed loop pole polynomial is therefore s plus 2 plus 4k, which we want to equal s plus 5, because we've said we want the closed loop pole to be minus 5. And therefore you end up with a simple identity, 2 plus 4k equals 5, you can solve 4k. We reiterate though that this design has got a single criteria and in practice there will be multiple criteria and you may not be able to meet them all simultaneously or equally well. Separate design problem then. Choose a proportional gain, m of s equals a, to set the offset to 10%. And again, you'll see I've got a particular system here. So first thing to do is write down the offset formula. So there it is, the offset formula is 1 over 1 plus g of 0 times k, which gives me 1 over 1 plus 0.5k. And I want that to be 10%. So there's my formula, 0.1 equals 1 over 1 plus 0.5k, which implies that I have to satisfy 0.1 plus 0.05k equals 1. So I can choose k. But again, we reiterate that this is a single criteria. So meeting this criteria does not mean that you will meet other criteria that are likely to apply. A summary then for first order systems with proportional feedback. You can define explicit formula linking time constant gain, pole and offset to the open loop parameters and the choice of proportional gain. The speed of response and the closed loop gain increase with the compensator gain k, but offset can never be removed. But the key thing is, in general, large values of k cannot be selected, so that's a bit of a warning because this would cause unrealistic values for the actuation signal, that's the actuator in there. In, in practice, k is limited because actuation is limited. And a further warning, although this is useful as an introduction to design, so we've demonstrated in principle you can choose k to meet a specific criteria with proportional feedback. In general, proportional feedback alone is not satisfactory, and you've seen that for these first order systems. What about second order systems then? It's interesting to ask whether we can undertake systematic design to meet, again, I'm just going to have a single specified criteria with a second order system. And here I'm going to use a constant denominator just for convenience. Here's the example then. So I've chosen, a, no, sorry, this is the generic bit. So there's my second order system. And what I want to do first is ask what happens when I add proportional feedback. Well, there's my closed loop transfer function. Again, you can see how the k comes into the closed loop transfer function. Offset and gain have actually got the same pattern as you saw with the first order system. You can see these formula here and you can do sketches which essentially are equivalent to what we did with the first order system. And you will see the same pattern that as you increase k, the gain increases and the offset reduces, but the offset never goes to zero. The gain never gets to one. What about the closed loop pole polynomial then, which I've written down here? Now you'll remember with second order systems we need to look at normalised forms with damping ratios and the like. So this system is going to be underdamped if this criteria is met. And basically you can see that criteria is met if this k term is large. So if k is too large, you're going to be underdamped and oscillatory. So there's a limit to how large k can be. Conversely, if you choose k to be small, you could be overdamped and too overdamped and therefore too slow. So in practice, you need k to have a middle ground. Also bearing in mind that this criteria is telling you that you want to push k to be as large as possible. Here's an example then. Choose k to achieve a damping ratio of 1, which is critical damping. So first I find the closed loop pole polynomial. There it is, s squared plus 3s plus 2 plus 4k. And if you want to, you can put this in the normalised form. Critical damping means that you have two equal real poles. That is, zeta equals 1. Now, what that means, if you look at your formula that you will have studied in school, is that 3 squared has got to equal 4 times 2 plus 4k, or 1 equals 16k. Now you can test this 
plug the number in, calculate the closed loop transfer function, and this is what you'll get. And you can see you have indeed got two equal real poles. However, here's the warning. You're going to have a significant offset. If I look at the closed loop gain for this example, you can see it's 0.25 divided by 2.25. So your closed loop gain is very, very small. So your offset is going to be massive. So a summary for second order systems with proportional feedback. Although you can find a proportional compensator to meet single criteria with second order systems, the algebra can be slightly awkward. And given the fact that often there are multiple criteria, we're not going to continue with this set of illustrations. We still cannot remove offset with proportional alone. And this is probably the most important design criteria in practice because you want to know your system delivers the correct output, which could be a speed or a temperature or a quality or something else. So the summary, although proportional feedback alone is useful as an introduction to design principles to demonstrate, yes, I can choose a K to meet a specific criteria. In general, proportional feedback alone is not going to be satisfactory. Now, just for completeness, let's look at a high order system. So here you can see I've given you a fourth order system and ask what can we do with proportional feedback alone? Now, in this case, I'm going to use software because you can't do paper pen calculations of roots once you get to quadratics. It simply does not work. What I've done here then is I've plotted the closed loop step responses as I varied the proportional compensator k. So you'll see I've gone from values of 0.1 all the way up to 50. And as normal, for normalization, I've set the target to be 1. So that's where I want the steady state to be. First thing to notice then is that if k is very small, I've got very slow responses and a very large offset. So small k is not going to be satisfactory. As I increase k, I'm getting lots of oscillation. Yes, the offset's reducing, but I'm still quite a long way from 1, which is my target. You can see these are settling over here somewhere, and I've got lots of oscillation. So those aren't satisfactory either. And if I increase k too much, I end up with instability. Now, you've got an interesting observation here. You can see that k small is not satisfactory, k medium is not satisfactory, and k large is not satisfactory. Proportional alone has not worked. So we've investigated the potential to meet design, design criteria such as poles, time constant, gain offset, damping and so forth with just proportional control. It's possible to meet some single criteria, but it's likely that other potential criteria will be poor as a consequence. And the critical criteria of zero offset cannot be met with proportional alone. So the following resources are going to look at how we can tackle offset and thus augment our possible set of design tools to meet more criteria simultaneously.